Welcome to another edition of the Peyton Chatney Show presented by The Rogue. I'm Neil McCready. That is Ole Miss second baseman Peyton Chatney, who will be in an airplane on his way to Omaha, Nebraska in about 13 hours from the time that we're taping this. Probably by the time you see it or hear it, he will, uh, he'll be on his way to Omaha. I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, they have a tournament out there in, uh, in Omaha every year. Only eight teams are invited. And... Um, Ole Miss happens to be one of those teams. So we will talk about that and uh, and a lot of other things involving Ole Miss as the Rebels have uh, clinched a bit in the College World Series after sweeping Southern Miss in the Super Regional last weekend. So we'll talk about a bunch of that stuff in just a minute. First, I do want to tell you that we are brought to you by The Rogue. They have uh, sponsored the show throughout the year. This is episode number 11, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, and it's been made possible by the Rogue 4450 I-55 North in Jackson. They've got uh, all the collegiate collection. If you are uh, headed out to um, to Omaha, and I know a lot of Ole Miss fans are, and you're in the Jackson area, stop by the Rogue, grab uh, grab some of their college gear, the polos, uh, that kind of stuff. And um, they've also got all the latest items from Tommy um, uh I forget all the names, all the name, all the different brands. They've got them, uh, whether it's like Tommy Bahama or whatever the case may be. They've got all that stuff. They hand select pieces from work to life, lifestyle to nightlife. They've got it all at the Rogue 4450 I-55 North in Jackson or the Rogue.com. Peyton, how are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. <laughs> um, if I told you... If I had told you on the Sunday afternoon after you guys lost the series finale at Arkansas to go to four, seven and fourteen in the league, if I had told you, "Hey, you're going to Omaha," would you have thought, "Nah, you're just being super"? What would you have thought if I told you that? It's crazy because you know we we still believed in in the little bit of hope that we had left. You know, the slim chance that we were going to make it. Um, we all still kind of held on to it, but there was a point in um, the season is especially after the SEC tournament where we're like, man, like it's not, I don't think it's up to us anymore. Like we, it's his hands now and I don't know if we're going to make it. So it's been a really cool experience. This is awesome. Um, I think it just makes the story even cooler. Yeah, it really does. Doesn't it? I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it's, um, I, I wrote this in, in my 10 weekend thoughts the other day that if you wrote this in like a script form, people would, I, I think, they would reject it by going, nah, that's not, that's, that's a little too far fetched, right? That this team, media, you know, is number one in the country and then they hit this, I don't know, five week slump. I mean, now that it's over, I think we can talk about it honestly. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> it was bad. You guys really weren't playing that well and, and you were losing games that you probably should have won. And I mean, I remember kind of thinking at one point, and it had to cross your mind too, you know, maybe they're just kind of mediocre this year. Maybe they just, they're not bad, but they're not good. They're just kind of there. And I, I, I would have, if you had told me on that Sunday afternoon, hey, that team's going to Omaha, I would have said, hey, you, you need to get off whatever it is that you're on right now because they're not going to Omaha. And it's like a switch flipped. And, and I don't know, we've talked about it a lot. You guys got in, and since you got into the tournament, you're just dominating. I mean, you're not only winning. I know Miami played you guys close. It was a hell of a game. Two to one game is a hell of a game. But other than that, you guys are just kicking people's asses. I mean, what what has happened? It's so hard to to say. Like, I don't know exactly what has switched. Like, what there was no you know key point to where we're like, you know what? Yeah, now we're gonna start playing well. You know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, I feel like all year long we've had the capability of playing as well as we are right now. It's just for whatever reason it wasn't clicking, but now it is, and. Um, couldn't be in a better time to click than now, man. You know, I told people, Peyton, that you – I mean, you were careful with what you said on the show last week, but you seemed awfully confident. And, you know, I try to always keep the parts where you and I talked before and after the taping to us because that would be uncool <laughs> for me to, like, reveal what you said. But I did tell some people afterwards, I was like, he felt really good about it. I mean, you could tell that he was kind of itching to get there. And and and, and if, if, if he's representative of that team, they're going to – they're going to be hard to beat down there. And that turned out to be the case. I mean, you guys, you know, the knock on the Ole Miss program, I mean, it's not it's long before your time. Uh, frankly, some of it happened when you were probably still in diapers. But, you know, the <laughs> knock on it is in the Super Regionals, the Ole Miss gets tight. 
that the closer you get to Omaha, the tighter you get. And the tighter you get, the more you press. And the more you press, the tighter you get. And it's that circle. You guys were not that at all. I mean, you guys were like, I don't know if you were, you, you tell me. I mean, I'm the one interviewing you, but I don't know if it was looseness or confidence or a little combination of both or just kind of a, hey, it's just baseball. I, I don't, it was, there was a body language that, that was kind of laissez faire, if you will. Yeah, I remember I was talking to somebody um, during the first game of the Super Regional. I was like, it just doesn't feel like this is a Super Regional right now. Like, it's little, it actually feels like it's just another weekend. It really did. Um, way different than I thought it felt last year. Like, completely different. And, and you're probably right about, like, we probably did play a little too tight last year. And, um, you know, I think we, we had a great team. I think we were super – we were capable of making it last year, but it just seemed like we, we weren't playing the same way we're playing right now. It really does feel super loose. And part of that is, is our coaching staff has been doing a really good job of it this year of, I forget exactly when it was weekend, but there was a point when coach Clem, our hitting coach came up and talked to the hitters. We weren't, we hadn't scored yet. It was like the third inning or so or something like that. Um, and was just kind of like, Hey, like, don't get frustrated, like stick to our plan, stick to the process. We're going to score runs. We're going to get it done. And, um, you know, it kind of helps, it kind of helps the players out. And that's how I feel like the vibe has been the whole postseason. It's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do this. So um, it was cool. And, and I don't want to say I knew we were going to win, but it just felt like a, a different feeling than it did last year. It really did. You were saying before we started, I'm curious whether you want to get into this. You were, you, you, there was a part of you watching that series earlier the week before that was like, you know, we, we had a lot of success against LSU. I, w- I wouldn't mind playing them again. They're, you know, you had lost a game to Southern Miss. You'd beaten Southern Miss. But, you know, they, there was a lot of talk about their historic season and it was going to be really hostile and all that stuff down there and all that stuff. Were you looking back on it? Do you, are you, is there any part of you that wished, hey, I wish it had been LSU to play a, a big art rival and stuff, or did it go the way, kind of fall the way you wanted it to fall? I think I think it went exactly how I wanted it to go now. Back then, you, you're 100% right. Like, for whatever reason, I wanted to play LSU. Not everybody. It was just – it was kind of mixed emotions um, just because I felt like we played LSU really well, and we had seen their actual – their pitchers. You know, we hadn't really seen much of Southern Miss's um, – starters or anything like that we always played them in the midweek so we didn't know exactly what we were getting into with LSU I know exactly what it was going to be so I have for some reason had more confidence playing LSU um but but I'm glad it turned out the way it did you know (laughs) however it takes to win um I'm happy with it and they're a really good team something Miss really was they had a great season um but but yeah no it was awesome and I'm glad we played Southern Miss so take me through your thoughts on uh I guess Sunday afternoon as that game's unfolding and, and it's obvious that you guys are in control of it. Uh, Hunter Elliott was terrific a day after Dylan DeLucia was terrific. Um, as that becomes, I'm sure you're counting outs in your head a little bit. You're trying not to get ahead of yourself, but you know, as it becomes obvious that barring some sort of a disaster, you, you guys are going to win. What What's kind of going through your mind at that point? I remember um, it was the top of the eighth inning and I remember I was literally playing in my head, like what the announcers were saying out there, like, you know, oh, they're only six outs away from winning this thing. And I just remember saying six outs and then five outs and four outs. And it kind of just went down on the way. And, and um, I kind of told you this before, but it felt like the way Hunter was pitching, if we could just scratch one run, we would have won that game, which is true. We, you know, we would have shut him out, but um, it just, we had so much confidence in him and the way he's been pitching, lately has been unbelievable for us, but it was a really cool moment. And, and to have Tim be the guy that catches the last ball, it's like the most historic and heroic thing for him. It was awesome. Yeah. It was super fitting. Wasn't it? The ball got hit to him again. That's kind of part of the script where Hollywood would have been like, come on, let's, let's mix something up here. Cause this is, yeah, we've, we've literally said, uh, like whenever we kind of started to turn the page and after we were seven and 14, like they're going to make a movie about this. They're going to make a 30 for 30 about the team that that was seven and 14 wasn't supposed to get in and make a regional and, and then make a super regional and win it and go to Omaha. I, this is an unbelievable season and the lows really do make it that much cooler. They really do. What was that bus ride like back? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. I think the coolest story I have is so normally um, coach Clem 
drives. So his family went, and so he would, normally drives back, you know, so, so that way his wife doesn't have to drive all the way back by herself. And uh, he was getting ready to get into the car, and um, his wife looks at him and was like, how many times um, has Ole Miss been to Omaha? Something like that. And he said two. And how many times have you been a part of that? And it's once. He goes, why don't you ride the bus back? So he was fired up that he got to ride the bus back. And we all hung out and did our normal stuff. And what that's what I love road trips so much. We just all get to hang out and everything like that. Um, but it was fun. We were playing music and jamming out, and it was a great time. I've and then you- whenever we got back, it was even cooler. Whenever we got back, there was like uh, – a ton, like 300 people there waiting for us and then DJ and all sorts of stuff. It was awesome. Oh, that is awesome. I've told people that I thought just based on doing this show and kind of getting to know you that I thought you guys were in better position to do this by going on the road than you would have been in Oxford. Not that there's yeah. obviously you love playing at home and you love playing yeah. in front of your home crowd and stuff, but there's something about teams that like each other teams that have been through adversity together that going on the road and just having friends and family and girlfriends and stuff that's that's all that's there right there's not a lot of the, the outside stuff and there's not the angst and that kind of thing the angst is on the other team i mean southern miss had all the pressure they'd had the historic season and all of that stuff and um i thought you guys uh, it, it gave you better odds playing on the road than than had it been at home yeah honestly I mean, we love playing at Swayze, no doubt, but we have been playing in these pressure games and these super uh, must-win games for so long now, now that it almost gives us an advantage. It's like it, it kind of hypes us up more. It kind of gives us a little bit more of a um, an edge to play, and I think it definitely helped us out, and I, I've told you before, I love the road for those exact reasons. Like my family and, and everybody is really good about, like, this is a business trip. We're here to play. You know, we're two games away from from Omaha, so it's really just us as a as a um, a team hanging out and everything like that. It's it's a great time. I'm curious because you know your your goal at the start of a season, when your goal when you when you sign with a program like Ole Miss or an SEC program, is to get to Omaha, right? To com- be able to compete for a national championship and to get to play on this level, you have to play a lot of baseball before that high school, middle school travel ball. I'm sure you can't even imagine. There's probably no way for you to calculate how many games you've played, which also means that when you were a kid, probably before you had a driver's license, there were a lot of, there were a lot of uh, weekends and stuff that your parents sat at ballparks in the heat or in the cold and, and watched you play and, and, and stuff. They were there to to see you, you know, get to Omaha. What was what was that like, just for you to yeah, kind of share that moment with them? It's really cool. My my parents have been my biggest fans for for a long time now. They've always believed in me, which is unbelievable to have a, a this, this the support system that they've had for for me is amazing. And like you said, travel ball. It's for anybody that's not a travel ball parent. It is it is a tough deal. It's Baseball is not a cheap sport for sure. Like my mom, I played for 100 Pence Baseball Academy, and my mom was an assistant principal whenever I was in um, high school and middle school and stuff. And she would would have to you know wake up early, get to the school, stay there till three or four o'clock, and then right after that she was going over to 100 Pence um, Baseball Academy and working the front desk and staying there until like nine o'clock. So she's working um, a long, long day just so I could play. You know that was the only reason that. Um, she was working at Hunter Pence was so that way we could kind of afford travel ball because it's it's super expensive and and then same with my dad my dad has been there from the very beginning he's he's always been my biggest fan and um, one thing I credit him a lot of is is um, you know he he's not the dad that is going to force me to do anything like he is going to be there and he and if I want to go hit then he's going to be there and support me and do whatever he needs to do. But he was never the guy that pushed me. Um, I just got a phone call. Gosh, dang it, Spears. <laughs> you're all right. I don't know if you're still there. I lost you. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. I'm but he was just, he was the guy that um, never pushed me to do anything. Um, he kind of wanted to always be on my own and, you know, make my own decision, which which is good because you see a lot of guys now just get burnt out from the amount of, of baseball that you play. Um, but both my parents have been there for, for, from the very beginning for me. And it is really cool. It's, it was a special moment just to be able to hug both of them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Um, you ever been to Omaha before? 
I've never been. I've never even watched. I've never really? even been. So now. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so I was going to ask that. What was one of the questions? You guys didn't get there last year. Obviously, did you just intentionally not watch any of the College World Series? <laughs> I barely watched. Um, I watched like maybe the very beginning. I didn't watch too much more after that. It's just kind of like I mean, it's obviously cool, and I was happy for for everyone that got to play in it and stuff. But but. You know, that's where I want to be. I, I want to be there. I wanted to be the guy that was playing and not watching. And it's kind of something I don't know. I didn't feel I didn't really necessarily want to watch it. Were you surprised that the SEC had as much success? The SEC's got four teams from the SEC West in there. Um, you guys are in the same bracket with with Auburn and who you play on Saturday and Arkansas, who you could potentially play on Monday. And obviously, uh, you know, Stanford's in that mix as well. And then on the other side, it's Texas A&M and then. I know you know probably some guys on the Texas team. You might know some guys in the Oklahoma team from from just your travel ball stuff. But I mean, that's a a heavy SEC presence. Did that surprise you, given what you saw from the league this year? Um, I don't think it's too surprising, and and I always tell people like that's why I came to the SEC is to play in the best conference. I I believe is the best conference, um, the best amateur baseball you could probably play in is is. Um, in the SEC. So it's really cool. It's cool for the conference. And um, I think it grows the game a little bit more just having all those guys in the, the big name schools be the guys that are up there. Um, I don't want to see how surprised. Like when we played those dudes, they, they were a good team, obviously. So um, I'm not surprised. I thought it was cool. I think it's awesome. Do you remember much from playing Auburn? It was like, seems like a million years ago. There's been a lot of, a lot of baseball and a lot of drama that has happened yeah. since then. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, that feels like it was last year playing over. Like that was a completely different season. Um, that was a different season for both of us. I feel like so it's going to have a little bit of um, familiarity, a little bit, but I think it's going to be kind of a different feel. I think both teams have probably changed a lot. So you guys get to take like a charter out out there uh, tomorrow. You've you've been on the on the Oakland A's charter on the way back from Coral Gables. Um, Kind of start to feel like what it's like to be in the big time like this. Yeah, I mean, these guys got it. They got it made. It is, it is unbelievable. There are, there are seats with with tables in front of them, and and we were talking to some of the um, flight attendants on the A's plane, and they were telling us all about all the food and drinks, and I mean, like these guys are getting full on steaks and and lobster and everything. It's it's unbelievable. I don't think we're going to get that stuff, but um, <laughs> just, just just so that way I don't have to squeeze next to Van Cleaver, whoever's going to be next to me. I'm going to get a full on, you know, a chair for just for myself. It's a, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> what, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite travel snack? What's your go-to in, in the air? Ooh, see, that depends to me. Sometimes I'm a sweet guy. Sometimes I'm a salty guy, but the one thing I always have to have is like, I have to have a, some sort of drink with me. Like if I don't have a water or a Gatorade or something, somehow my mind will trick me into thinking I'm thirsty. And then I have to sit there and just wait until somebody offers me a drink and I can get one. But um, <laughs> my main thing is like, I will always have a water bottle with me. I have to, it's, I don't know why. <laughs> um, I'm curious, you guys were getting ready to play. Did you know before the game started that Tennessee had lost? No, I knew in the middle of the game they put it up on the jumbotron of all the you know the scores of the games, and I had seen that they lost, and I was kind of thinking like, that's not real. Like that's got to be from yesterday's game or something like that. Like there's no way Tennessee's out of it, right? There's no way. Like this team is um, one of the best teams to ever play college baseball. And then um, I remember we got back in the dugout, and everyone's like, "Wow, Tennessee lost. This is crazy." And then I went back out onto the field, and I was kind of talking to the umpires. And, you know, it's always good to talk to the umpires and try to get to. Uh, get to know them and be friends with them. Um, but he was talking about it too. And he was like, you know, I'm just curious Does do the players hate Tennessee as much as the the fans do. And I, I was like, no, it's, I think it's completely different from the way the fans feel about it versus players. But um, we were just kind of talking about Tennessee and how crazy it is that they lost. That's a little bit of karma if you ask me, but uh, <laughs> I mean, that's me. Talk that's me talking, not you. Um, I, the reason I asked about them is because there was, I don't know, it went in my mind when, when uh, Tennessee lost, I was like, you know, all season long, and they deserve it because they, they were great all year. I mean, 25 and 5 in the SEC. I mean, damn, right? Um, I mean, that's hard to do. And, and they dominated and, and, and stuff. But once they went out, 
the team that everyone said, oh, it's, you know, there were people that were like, hey, well, who would you take, Tennessee or the field? And people would say, oh, I'd take Tennessee. And I'm like, that's crazy, but maybe you're right, you know. Now that they're out, is there a part of you that thinks, and I know you're a competitor and all that, but is there a part of you that thinks, hey, this thing's even more wide open than it ever was? We've got as good a chance as anybody of, of winning a national championship in the next two weeks. Uh, oh, no doubt. Like, um, that just shows you right there. Like, baseball's the craziest game where literally anybody can win on any given day. And um, I do think it kind of levels the playing field a little bit just to have them be out of it. Now it's just, it's hard to, I don't want to say like um, it's a fear factor or anything like that, but but it's just the amount of hype and the amount of uh, whatever you want to call it, the aura of, of Tennessee, like they were dominant. They were really good. And and to kind of have them out, it, it kind of in a weird way does make you feel like, all right, yeah, this thing's wide open. We can, Anybody can win this thing. What is the kind of the mindset of you guys right now? I mean, you've, you've, you got to Omaha that you reached the college world series. And for some teams that's, kind of you know they get there and it's like hey we're here is do you sense that there's any satisfaction with you guys or do you sense there's still a lot of hunger i think there's still a lot of hunger just mainly because of the way this season's gone like everybody is saying this this would be the coolest story if we can do it i think everybody wants to to win it so bad and um it would be really cool to win it for coach b too it'd be awesome um but no, I, I don't think we're satisfied just yet. Like there's a there's been a lot of people saying like job's not finished, you know, we're not here just on vacation, blah, 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 blah. It's it's we're still gonna we're trying, trust me. <laughs> you brought it up, so I'll ask, how much was the whole coach Bianco's um job security was that ever a topic among you guys, whether in the dugout or the locker room or just back in your apartments or whatever? Or did you was that something you guys were able to successfully sort of avoid? I don't want to say we completely avoided it. Like there's definitely times when you hear all sorts of different stuff, but that's, it's all noise. Like you, we have no idea. Just like we didn't know if we were getting in, you know, so many people said we were for sure not making it into a regional. Like, I don't think anybody knows. Like there's so many rumors and stuff going out there. So you can try to speculate and figure some stuff out, but it was never really a big topic for us, to be honest. How happy were you for him though, to, you know, to get there, to get that, all that stuff off where no one's going to talk about that, at least for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I felt that. I felt so bad from last year. Like I, I wanted to obviously make it just for, you know, my own accomplishments in the team, but you could just tell how bad coach wants to win and, and get to Omaha and everything. Cause I know he says he doesn't hear the noise and maybe he doesn't at all, but like, there's no way you don't hear some of the stuff he gets. There's just no way. Um, I was, I was so pumped up and somebody asked me earlier today, like, what was the favorite, what was my favorite moment from after winning? And it was whenever we were all jumping up and down dog piling, and then we kind of got together and coach, we just got in the middle and starts yelling and goes, Hey, he goes, I need a hug. And we all like hugged him and, and we start cheering. And it was just a really cool moment for him. And, and for us, it's, you know, he's been there all year round. Like he's one of the only guys, but you know, that's, that has been able to, he's our leader. He's our guy that gets us going. And he's the one that has believed in us and told us, Hey, there's still a chance we can make it. Don't listen to what those guys are saying out there. Like we can still do it, that type of stuff. So it was really cool. It was a special moment for us. We started this season um, talking about the cold. I remember in, in episode one of the show, we were talking about how cold it was and you had to ignore the cold. You had the exact opposite of that last week in Hattiesburg. It's going to be super hot in Omaha too. They're talking about like 106 on Monday or something like that. When you're on the field, is it is it uh, especially on those turf fields where the I was telling you, I mean, my my son had a soccer game a minute ago, and that turf that they were playing on, it had to be 140 degrees, which is what you guys were just playing on. Is it hard to ignore that heat and and focus? Is it easier to focus to to block out the heat than it is the cold earlier in the year, or, or how's that work? Listen, I I will I will keep my word about what I said earlier or one of our first episodes about I would rather play in 110 degrees versus 45 degrees. Um, I think just part of it's probably because I'm from Houston, Texas, and, and it's always hot and muggy there and everything. Um, but it, it's just totally different playing in in the cold versus the hot. It's, it's way different. I would rather be sweating and having to pour water on my back or something like that. Um, but the, the main thing is, I don't know if anybody even saw like So one of the main things 
you have to really worry about whenever it's hot outside is hydration. You know, obviously you're sweating a ton, you're going to get dehydrated, but I don't know if anybody even saw it after the dog pile, we're all getting up. And for a second, like we all thought Kevin Graham's season was over. Like we all thought he was done because he's laying on the ground, holding his leg. And he's like, he's just looking down. It doesn't look like a cramp the way he's you know looking at it. He just hold it and he's rocking back and forth. And later we find out it's just a cramp and he's got dehydrated and everything. But for a second, I was like, Oh no, like we might, Oh, I oh we could have really screwed some things up for us. But you always but it luckily it was fine. So I think, yeah, like I was like, Oh no, like there's going to be, Oh, coach B is going to kill us, whatever. But, um, that is probably the biggest thing about the heat is just you have to drink so, so much water, but, um, I would still rather play in it. No doubt. So you're going to get out there tomorrow on Wednesday. I should say, I should always, when you're doing radio or just this stuff that's pre-recorded, you should use the name of the day. I, I've done this long. I know that you guys are going to get there on Wednesday. You don't play until Saturday night. Does that give you a little time just to sort of soak it in before you put game face on? I think it's great that we get to get there, um, even earlier than we normally do. It's, it's, I'm sure everyone's nerves are going to be, you know, ticked up just a little bit more and everyone's going to be super anxious. So it's going to be good to be able to get there and um, practice and kind of just get familiar with the, with the place and everything. Um, it's going to be even more fun. That's why I love road trips. I always say that just, we're going to get there even earlier and, and hang out and there's, we're not going to be able to really do much because, you know, we're going to be on some sort of strict schedule, but um no, I love it. I think it's good for us. I think it's good that we get to, you know, kind of get acclimated to the weather and just everything like that. It's it's smart. What's well, the ultimate college baseball road trip for you guys? I'm super happy for you and 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 for your team that that you guys got to this place. It's a hell of an accomplishment, especially from where you came from. I know a lot of fans are going. I'm sure you have family that that's going out uh, for for this. So it's a it's a celebration too. I mean, for for really for all eight teams. I mean, I said this earlier. I mean, everybody wants to win it. Only one team's going to win it. But for all eight teams, I mean. You, there will be disappointment, the seven that don't win it. But I think everybody will look back on this and go, that was a hell of an accomplishment to get to that place. Cause it's, it's the kind of like I heard Mike Bianco say this, it's kind of the Holy grail of, of college baseball and you're there. And so congratulations. And, and um, I, I wish you the best of luck and I know it's gonna be a lot of fun. And um, I appreciate you doing this throughout the year. I look forward to maybe touching base with you in Omaha when you're there. Hopefully, yeah. you, guys, hopefully you guys have a long stay. Of course. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's gonna be awesome. That's Peyton Chatney, and again, uh, we're brought to you by The Rogue. We've been brought to you by The Rogue all year, 4450, I-55 North in Jackson, or therogue.com. They've got all the latest items from uh, all the, the the best clothiers around. Uh, they've got the college collection as well, Ole Miss gear. So if you're headed up to Omaha, if you just want something to wear in your living room or at the local sports bar where you're going to be watching the game, whatever the case may be, stop by The Rogue or visit their site, 4450, I-55 North in Jackson or therogue.com. For Peyton Chatney, I'm Neil McCready. Until next time, take care.